Molto, molto, molto grazie. I'm going to move to the wine part. Um, yes, that's what I'm going to do. Love Italy. Do you love Italy? What? Do you love Italy? Do I love Italy? I love Italy. I love it. I do. I love. I lived in Italy for a while. I loved it so much. I. Uh, I I, I, I start. I was in a. Let me see. Remember, I was in a band. I was in a band in, uh, when I left school and through college. And then I. Uh, I just I did. I didn't. I didn't really. I felt like I didn't really fit with the music industry. We were signed to a record company, and I just didn't feel like I fit. So I decided I was going to quit music and go to Tuscany and be a farmer. <laughs> so. I, uh, I lived there for a while, and it was beautiful, but, uh, sorry? No, all I produced was lettuce, tomatoes, basil, and <laughs> simple things. But the, uh, I lived on a fattori, and uh, they, they produced great olives, and it was the nicest olive oil I've ever tasted in my life. It was the, the day that it was picked, and it came home in a big um, bottle. Big, big, big bottle, and uh, that was beautiful. So, um, I'm going to, to need... Oh, I have an idea. Because <clears throat> I'm going to tell you a story, and it involves a girl, and this is the chair for the girl. Uh, and normally, or sometimes, I would you know, pull somebody from the audience, but I actually have a friend... I have three friends here today, which is so nice. My touring has turned into total friend holiday meeting up, and so that my friend... And Natalia from Colombia, who lives in Spain, flew into Italy today, and it's uh, our 15-year an friendship anniversary. So uh, I'm going to ask her if she'll do. Will you? Will you do this? <laughs> Can you drink wine? <laughs> she's giving me the. She's like, fuck you. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> I don't know. Castello di Arcano. Uh, Merlo non so. A Merlo of some sort. Um, Italia. So, <laughs> what? See, okay, let me see. Is this thing working? So, once upon a time, can everybody see? Yes? Oh, kind of. Once upon a time, uh, there was this man. He was running out of the rain. He was in Ireland. It's always fucking raining in Ireland. And he was running out of the rain and going into a bar. And on his way in the entrance of a bar, he banged into this girl and knocked her onto the floor. <laughs> And uh, he said, oh, I'm very sorry. And he went to pick her up and she was like, one of these proud, hey, I'm fine, you know. Oh, sorry, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And she was like, it's fine. And so he was really apologetic. No, really, I'm sorry, I'm really very sorry. And she was like, oh, it's fine, you know. <laughs> and he said, let me buy you a drink, please. Just let me buy you a drink, please. Just let me buy you a drink, please. Just let me buy you a drink, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> In Ireland, we like to say sorry a lot, <laughs> too much. So they went into the bar, and uh, they, so he, she agreed, and uh, they had a glass of wine. Mm, look at that. And uh, they drank it. Cheers. I have to drink it fast. getting him um, ahead of myself. They talked and talked and talked, and he discovered that they lived in uh, very close to each other. It was miles from the city center, but it was, it was not that far from each other, and they were so surprised they'd never seen each other before. 
And after one glass of wine, she was more relaxed and more open. And he was more relaxed and not so sorry, you know. So he, he just said, would you like another glass of wine? I said, yes. oh yeah, sure. So they had another glass of wine. <laughs> I'm going to be an alcoholic after this tour. Cheers. Okay. continued talking and talking and talking and they got more comfortable and just got a little bit closer and there was one moment where her knee, her leg, touched his leg and he was like <laughs> It's amazing isn't it at the beginning of a relationship how incredible just that leg touching is like <laughs> and then you know after time we don't appreciate that anymore but whatever um, but anyway, at this particular time, he was like, the leg, the fire was going on and he ordered another drink and... <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Then, the clock was coming, he spotted the clock and it was coming close to the time where his last bus was leaving and he didn't have any money at the time. And so he didn't have the money for a taxi. And so he, he thought, oh, fuck, I gotta get my last bus. Because he lived like 15 miles away, which is 22 kilometers away or something, you know. And he didn't want to walk 22 kilometers. And so he was looking at the time and then he, all of a sudden he realized, ah, she lives there too. <laughs> so if I miss my bus, she misses her bus. And so he kind of thought, oh, would you like another drink? And he thought it was a great excuse just to keep the focus on drinking and not focus on, uh, on the bus. <laughs> anyway, the bar closed and there were no more drinks and he was trying to think of some way of how could he keep her here or keep the conversation going and he talked to the barman he said please 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 and he said no no we're closed please 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 no no we're closed just one you know and so the barman gave gave just there was just one drink left <laughs> so oh <laughs> and he said hey i got you a drink and uh well, you can have it <laughs> You don't have to drink it all yet. <laughs> so they, they sat there and uh, this, was, this was a time that you could smoke in Ireland. And uh, he was thinking, wow, this is fucking amazing. We've missed our bus and we're going to spend the evening together. You know, I, I've touched her leg with my leg. <laughs> We've had four glasses of wine and th this is great. And then, all of us, he decided anyway to like announce innocently, oh my God, look at the time, we've missed our bus. And she was like, oh. And he was like, cool, she's relaxed. She, she doesn't have a problem. And uh, he said, shit, what are we gonna do? And she says, oh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I'm meeting my boyfriend at midnight, so... <laughs> uh, 
And so the beautiful energy <laughs> changed <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> and uh, he started to feel completely different, like that. It just changed instantly. And it's incredible how the mind would just go <laughs> and blow you apart. And so he uh, didn't really know what to say after that. He was, he was afraid of talking too much because if he talked too much, she would spot, she would understand that he had been falling, 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 falling. And so he, he just pretended he was drunk and uh, ah, so drunk. I can't really talk anymore. Anyway, I, I'm, uh, staying, I'm staying with my friend in, in the city tonight as well. Um, my girlfriend is, uh, is uh, somewhere. Uh, I'm going to meet her later as well. It's great. Um, anyway, it was lo lovely meet meeting you. Uh, can I have some of your wine? So he got embarrassed and he kind of uh, sort of just sort of said goodbye and left her in the bar and and just sort of wandered out into the street and wrote down cheers darling on a beer mat here's to you and joe love a boy cheers darling i've got years Wait around for you. Cheers, darling. I've got your wedding bells in my ear. Cheers, darling. You gave me three cigarettes to smoke my tears away. But I His name. I, I lied. I should have kissed you when we were running in the rain. But what am I, darling? A whisper in your ear. A piece of your cape. What am I? Your biggest 